just going to be the first part of Who Are The Scots. Um, a lot of websites dedicated to um, studying cultures and languages to see the similarities between them and the original Hebrews and uh, and the Scots, Scots and Irish Gaelic which are originated uh, with at least two of the Celtic tribes um, in fact probably a lot more than that is about five original Celtic tribes um, but the Gaels were the ones who came in and occupied uh, Scotland from from Ireland and uh, back in about I think it was about the third century but we'll do some more in-depth study into that and uh, you know there was a three-day um, spiritual battle between the king of the Gaels and uh, the king of the Picts at that time the Picts were practicing paganism they tattooed their bodies they painted themselves um, when in, in battle and so on but the the, the Gaels were the, the Christians but this is telling you that the, the Gaels were have have an affinity with uh, the the original Hebrew tribes, and it says here there are about four hundred and fifty two Hebrew words, which after being treated um, in this way are like Gaelic words. So basically, what he's saying here is that there's a direct translation and meaning between Hebrew words and Gaelic words. Okay, and it's telling you how many under the Hebrew alphabet that, that there are so I'll leave the link below um, to this website and you can study um, some of these words um, which uh, goes through quite a few of them in the Gaelic and Hebrew uh, they are the same just quickly look through some of them here the Aleph is the first letter in the, the Hebrew alphabet you know, so we have examples here, which you can read through. Um, I think the most well-known one is Brit, which means covenant. And there was a tribe of the Brits as well, originally, in, in the land of, of Britain, you see. So, <laughs> it's, uh, the, the British... Uh, British history is quite complex, but it became Christian, but uh, as I said, I'll do another video on that. Another one is Koinonia as well, which has a, has a direct Hebrew translation, which you can just type in and check the Hebrew meaning and check the Gallic meaning, and they're exactly the same. Hallelujah. Now this is the Arbroath Decoration um, thir of 1320 and uh, just very very quickly read it out. Most Holy Father, um, Lord John, Divine Providence, um, giving reference to the Catholic Church at that time. Um, different Earls, Earls of Moray, um, Lord of the Isle of Man, I think, which was originally part of Scotland. Annandale, um, Patrick Dunbar, um, Mercom, Lennox Town, that's a well known place. Sutherland, which is sort of near where my, my family are kind of from, way up the north tip of Scotland. Um, Henry Sinclair is, is, is known as a Knights Templar name, the Sinclairs, um, you know, um, early set settlers in Scotland which came from around, they settled around the north as well and they constantly had their feuds with the Sutherlands you see and uh, the next one there, William Oliphant, they were linked with the Sutherlands briefly some of these people even fought for the English because at that time there was um, religious um, fighting as well, religious and fighting uh, right up until about 1690 when you know armies came across from uh, 
Holland and just basically uh, started the, the Protestant Reformation. Um, which there was always, you know, uh, disagreements with the Catholic Church. Sometimes, you know, um, it's, it's good to side with them. Other times, you know, it just depended on the king or the rulership at the time. But a lot of power-hungry lords and kingships in England, you know, just wanted to rule, you know, not only Britain, but, you know, they just want to rule the, the world. <laughs> you know, that's the Anglo-Saxon. The Anglo-Saxons are a different tribe from, you know, the Celts. Very important to understand this. Uh, most Holy Father we know from the Chronicles and books of the ancients, we find that among other famous nations or towns, the Scots has been graced with widespread renown. It journeyed from Greater Scythia by the way of the Tyrrhenian Sea and the Pillars of Her Hercules which is uh, between North Africa and Spain that's just where the Celts are actually from they're telling you where the the tribe is actually originally from um, traveling down through North Africa this is this is uh, if you study the Celts this is where they actually came from and dwell for a long course of time in Spain among the most savage peoples, but now could it could it be, uh, nowhere could be subdued by any people, however barbarous. Thence it came, twelve hundred years after the people of Israel crossed the Red Sea, to its home in the west, where it still lives today. So they're actually referencing themselves as part of some of the lost tribes of Israel here. The Britons it first drove out, the Picts it utterly destroyed. This is talking about the Celts. Okay. And even though very often assailed by the Norwegians, the Danes and the English, it took possession of that home with many victories and untold efforts, and as the histories of old time bear witness, they have held it free of all uh, servitude ever since. In their kingdom, there have reigned 113 kings of their own royal stock and line unbroken by a single foreigner. So it also it talks about uh, the Scots holding the stone of destiny where the kings of Israel were, la were actually crowned. And so all this is fairly common knowledge but uh, a lot of people don't like um, going over this because you know for just various reasons but this is the the high qualities and merits of these people where they not otherwise manifest shine forth clearly enough from this that the king of kings lord of our lords our lord J jesus christ after his passion and resurrection called them even though settled in the uttermost parts of the earth almost the first to his most holy faith nor did he wish them to be conformed in that faith by merely anyone but by the first of his apostles by calling though second or third in rank the most gentle saint andrew and blessed peter's brother and desired him to keep them under his protection as their patron forever so if you actually look at the lineage of the apostles like for example uh, Judah was obviously I think he was from the tribe of Judah I think John as well may have been from the tribe of Judah or he could have been uh, from one of the other tribes you know Paul was from the tribe of Benjamin but it's said that uh, Saint Peter could have possibly been even though he, he stayed in Jerusalem now I mean, he, he could have still been from the tribe of Judah it's possible he was from the tribe of Reuben. Um, you know, the tribe of Reuben dwelt in, in kind of sea here. Um, it's very near to the the Jordan River. This was a part. This is uh, today. This part is known as um, the, you know, the the nation of of, of Jordan. You know, so it's. Uh, 
it's in our pans basically you know uh, today this is only the sort of west side of the Dead Sea if you go to this side it's uh, the Jordan and it's still um, settled by by Arabs you know this part here is sort of Palestinian a sort of mixed um, they, they count themselves as sort of Palestinians or, or Arabs but this was uh, where the tribe of Reuben Gad and Manasseh remember they 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 sort of hung around together like uh, you know Judah Benjamin and Levi sort of hung around together and then you had the other ones who hung around you know Naphtali Asher Zebulun and so on now uh, King Robert the Bruce is likened here to Maccabees you know the book of Maccabees from the Apocrypha or even Joshua from the the Old Testament um, Robert the Bruce is likened to him you know so what they're saying is that the that these noblemen and so on they count themselves from is Israeli stock um, going all the way back and they can trace their lineage all the way back to Israel um, legitimately even though of course God divorced them but in any um, course of divorcement uh, one of the testators has got to die and this is an, another reason that Jesus Christ had to die to bring back the lost tribes of Israel because he said remember um, I come to bring back you know the, the the lost only the lost tribes of Israel that was that was the Lord Jesus mission one of the Lord Jesus major mis missions here on earth hallelujah this last part or sorry the most famous part anyway of the declaration of our broth is um, that the people of Scotland uh, enthrone their king on the terms that you know they defend the faith and uh, also well let's just read it yeah yet if he should give up what he has begun seeking to make us our own kingdom subject to the king of England or the English we should exert ourselves at once to drive him as our enemy and a subverter of his own right and ours and make some other man who was well able to defend us our king for as long as a hundred of us remain alive never will we on any condition be subjected to the lordship of the English it is in truth not for glory nor riches nor honour that we are fighting but for freedom alone which no honest man gives up but with life itself and uh, it's very much said that other declarations of independence like the American um, you know the Constitution here um, about the freedoms of the the rights of I was going to say citizens but it's more to do with the common law and this is another thing I can make a video about that the common law of the men and women supersede uh, corporate laws and in fact uh, you know civil laws and all that stuff civilization all of that is superseded by the commands or the laws in the uh, in from the Bible which uh, really produces the um, common law you know isn't it just amazing that the Apostle Paul said that the statutes were nailed to the cross <laughs> you know um, see common law is true law um, and protects the the rights and freedoms of all men and women hope you've enjoyed this video guys see you next